Hi, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. As promised I'll do a uh, kit review of this uh, purchase that I got from the Stork Model Show. And it's a Dragon kit and it's the one of the, in the Imperials um, series. And it's Johan Huber and it's Jack Panzer Mark IV L70. And as you can see it's a striking box with a picture of the, the gentleman there in, in the corner. And obviously a representation of his, uh, of his vehicle. Um, it just says it's fifth company, second Albert. Oh, I can never pronounce this. Abertalung Panzer Regiment 25 Rothenburg, seventh Panther Division, Eastern Front 1945. So we're getting to the uh, really close to the end of the war. So on the uh, other side, we have just had the same sort of picture, obviously with the price that I paid. And if anybody's interested in this kit, it's nine zero six one. I've been on eBay and the rough price is, is all well over £50. So I, I think there was only one I've seen on eBay, um, £50 including with £3 delivery or something like that. But on King Kit, I'll leave a link, it's about 47 or something like that. So I seem to have got a good deal. Uh, on this side, got a bit of history of the man himself. I think it's a bit too long for me to uh, think, but. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let you have a little read, I'll gradually come it across there slowly so you can uh, hopefully make out what it says. Obviously it's 135th scale which I should have said. Oh well, there we go, that's the bit of writing on him, so if you've got time to read that. And on the other side we have uh, it says it's got a metal bar, obviously decals, uh, shirts in, photo etch, and then the cautions and the usual blurb. And it says it's copyright of 2005. This kit, so it's relatively old, you know, so it's, you know, 14 years old. So let's have a look what we've got inside the box. That's the main reason we're here. Let's pop this down here. We shall uh, do the decal, the uh, sorry, the decals, the instructions last. So what I'll do is I shall pop this box out of the way as well, and we shall go through bit bit by bit. I think so first we'll bring the sort of uh, partial dragon card out, which contains the decals, sort of the blade of the light there. Which contains the decals, the metal barrel, and the four to wet shirts, and, and looks like they're the brackets as well for it. And it definitely says 135th scale Jag Panzer Mark IV MA9059. And obviously, the barrels there, she's quite nice as well. It's got the. Uh, can't really quite see it there. I'll bring it round. Another decal symbol. Anyhow, it's a metal barrel and it's got the sort of the thing at the end built into the barrel so you can't quite see it because of the decals and it's in there. So the decals look quite nice as well, isn't it? very minimum. Obviously that was his number of his, of his beast, 405. And the Bolton Crosses, there's four of those. So there's not a great deal of decals which is usual for the, uh, for the armour kits. Let's just, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll open it up and we'll soon see, won't we? Let's find the bloody knife. Here we go. Let's have a look. It can all go back in the bag, can't it? Right, so we got decals. Yep, so we've got the photo etch, the metal barrel, and the same with the end piece. It's got that sort of groove at the end. Which is built in, which is quite nice, and we have the decals. So that's a nice start. Partial dragon card. I know the tracks are individual, but they're not magic tracks, so they're uh, on the sprue. But apparently, they are, they are quite nice. So we'll get to that later on in the in the unboxing. So we'll bring out the first sprue. Which looks part of the casement and the gun mantlet, and obviously the uh, plastic gun. Looks like it. Yeah. Detail is nice. Typical, usual dragon. 
quality. It's a nice cast texture on the uh, on the mantlet there. It's really quite nice. And now the upper casement. Uh, the rear of the casement again. Got nice well detail. Sorry, the nice. Uh, where it's been cut, fire flame cut on the ends of the casements, can we make that out? There we go. Let's just bring that light to there perhaps and maybe see it better. There we go. Quite thick. And there we have the uh, for the exhaust there, really nicely detailed again. Looks like the gun crutch or travel lock or whatever you want to call it. Some of the little bits and pieces, and say so there's the uh, two part of the gun. See, so I won't be using that. So it's not a bad start, that's quite nice. I don't know what the upper parts are, but uh, they're nicely detailed. I don't expect from Dragon. Right, in here, there's not masses of plastic, which, you know, which is good. And there's very, mm, mm, not many blue on there, which is good for Dragon as well. Not any blue parts on the instructions. So we have one sprue, two sprue, three sprue, four sprue the same, which obviously these the wheels and the uh, drive sprocket and the turn rollers. Uh, sorry, yeah, the wheels. So we can do it these, see what they look like. Very nice. And the bogies are really quite nicely detailed. And the transmission hub. The wheels and again they're nice and start off with the travel sorry with the uh, the bogies they're really quite nice them really nice detail on those and the leaf spring suspension and the wheels they're fine there's nothing wrong with those and then we have the sprocket again just nicely detailed let's bring it a bit close there we go there we go and then we have the trans final drive and then there's the uh, the return uh, return wheel. I don't know if that looks different or not. I'm not too sure. I'll check these with the sprues. Obviously, there's some. Uh, have you spare? Maybe that's part of the blue. A few small details, brackets and things. And there's the hubs for the uh, the wheels. And some more wheels there. I don't know what they are. And so far, there's no, I say, there's no flash or anything like that, which I wouldn't expect on a dragon kit, to be perfectly honest. And the detail is nice and crisp as well. And there's no injection marks where they're going to be visible so far. So that's a nice sprue again. Let me just check see if we've got. Are they all the same? No, then. Yeah, they're all the same. Aren't they? Ah, they're not all the same. There's two sprues with the uh, wheels and the the bits and pieces and there's a couple of sprues just with the uh, the wheels and again the um, the bogies so quite nice and then we get to the uh, upper hull and bits and pieces again I seem to have another gun barrel here. Obviously, it must be from another version, which is probably one of the things that isn't going to be used. And it is. That's so a spare barrel for the collection. Right, let's have a look at this deck. It's quite nicely detailed. Really, really, really nice. Nice detail. Quite smooth. But the front end of it's quite nice with the checker, port, checker plate on the, uh, on the wood guards. Nice rivet detail, bolt detail, and the two uh, hatches. Uh, some side uh, hinges on those. And the upper casement, obviously, we have the casement to go on top of that, so that's not the final fit you see. And the, the reverse of it, we have engine hatch and vent. Again, really, really nicely detailed again. And then we have the the gun mantlet, which is really heavily cast, which is really, really nice. 
a pig's head type thing, whatever it's called, boar's head, pig's head. Now that's really nice. You got that? There we go. That's really nice. Now obviously we have uh, side skirts, I think, yeah, and the rear. But again, we have the checkerboard effect again on the uh, the mudguards. I think they're for the sponsors to uh, underneath, so you don't get that bleed through the light bleed, which you wouldn't expect in a kit like this. And the same, we have another barrel there from uh, a shorter barrel, which we go in the spares. Really nice. Uh, low hub, low hub. Usual sort of pair on any on any on any tank build we have more if you've got a tub. And there again all the we have all the indentations and that where the uh, things are going to go. Seems to be a nice good chunky um, where it connects for the bogies which is good. I don't like sometimes where you have to I know like we've got these parts here where you stick them on but I'm glad it's not on down there because when you put the bogies on you've just got this thing to put them in there it's weak isn't it so when you're putting the tracks on especially if they're rubber bands they just break away I say that's quite nice nice detail on the bottom very, very nice detail on the bottom you know, the scape hatches and you know whatever bit and all the nice bolt heads and rivets and things so that's quite nice so that's typical fare for a uh, tub Right, another sprue here, sprue C. So we have some looks like the engine cover. C shoes for the uh, tracks, track tension, whatever they're called. Nice big wrench there. Or spanner, whichever you want to call it. There again, nice detail, no injection marks, no flash. That's the jack. Right, so let's go from there. So we're starting off with the uh, we have the jack box there and set as a spanner or whatever you want to call it. Wrench, some bits and pieces there, hatches. We'll go off work from the top downwards and then we start off with the uh, fine eaters, we've got the action, the shovel, and I think that's probably the big tanger's bar. And the fire extinguisher and a part of the uh, the jack and there's the engine cover. I'm going to see if I can source any. Uh, I think I may have some for the uh, for the grills. If they had them, I should don't know. I shall find out. And there's the uh, track cleaning rods. And again, some there's the uh, bolt cutters and the uh, manual starter there, the crank handle. And then we have some of the little bits and pieces again. As you see, there's no flash, and the detail is really quite nice. I don't know what that part is, but uh, very delicate, so I'll have to be careful. Is that flash I spot, or is that a part of the. Uh... No, it's part of the. Yeah, it's part of it. It just looks like a bit of flash, but I'm going to check that. If it is, then it's easy, it's not too bad to get out. The jack box is quite nice again with the detail on the jack box, but like most kits that don't follow it round, you know, it's it's plain on the sides, so I'll have to score some uh, some marks into that. So that's not too bad. It's not it's not a big easy, but if they can do it on the top, should be able to do it on the side. It's not a problem. That's certainly not a problem. So, right, another small sprue, and then we get to the tracks after that. So we have. More upper deck detailing, I would have thought, with the, uh, the looks of it. Some parts there, most of the, yeah, all these are used, these parts, there's no blue on these. There again, we have that nice, this is the rear, isn't it, by looking at this. And again, nicely detailed. And then we have, looks like, part of the uh, low, yeah. Now we've got to put the trans final drive and we've got them flame cut markings again and the rear there is nice again and I think that's probably the front glacier's plate I would have thought on the bottom they've got that nice 
flame cut effect again and on the bottom and well detail as well which is really really nice I knocked off the little man off the still got me rip it on the bench I still haven't put it away yeah I'm gonna to have to put it away because it'll give bloody damage on me right so that's our final of all the plastic apart from the dreaded tracks which I haven't had a good look at yet so we'll find out together what they're like if they're going to be if there's any uh, injection marks it's going to be a ball egg to get out and so we have one two three sprues and stuck together Pop that over there. Let's have a look at them. Ah, there's bloody injection marks on them. They're risen. I think I should be able to get them out. It's a pity that, but like the detail is nice on the out out of the track. And there's only two uh, connection points, and it, by looking at that, they are the points it's going to be connecting the tracks together. So that's a nice touch. I like that. Uh, on the reverse, they are nice apart from you can see the injection marks just where the guide horns are, one each side. And I've got some skinny sticks, all, uh, well, I should be able to get them out, there shouldn't be a problem. Most of them are risen, so it's not, it's not as if we have to fill anything in, so we'll probably give these a go. It's a shame, but they can't have everything. There's a bit of flash on that one there, it's unfortunate, but. That's the only one. I miss. I'm going to try these, and if I can't, then I'll have to source something. If they don't, it's going to take a bit of time to do all of them, but we'll, we'll give them a go. That's the only downside of that kit, I can see. All right, let's go to the instructions. Typical Dragon. Dragon instructions. There's not much blue there, as you can see, which is nice. Well, yeah. Fast not used, so we're not going to use that small barrel and some very small parts which I don't even know what they are. Right, so let's have a look at what we've got in destruction wise. It's fold out one unfortunately, but can't do nothing about that. So we have that usual fair to start with stimulating the wheels and the drive and the sprockets and other bits and pieces on the lower running gear which is nice just a two busy I just I just love that separation between each in each step with a line or something and it doesn't look too busy that's the only fault I have with dragon kits is their, uh, their instructions right, so let's fold that round the other way this is like say this is the ball that is doing this as well it must be easy to do it smaller and in booklet form, but obviously not for them. And then we're starting to assemble the uh, where we are, there we are, the bogies and putting the wheels on, which I won't be doing at that time. I'll uh, leave them off, and then we're starting to work on the upper casement there and the tracks. And it doesn't say how many tracks per side. No, it's something you're going to have to work out ourselves, which I'll have to look into. Or if anybody has any ideas, they could leave me a comment. Of roughly how many tracks each side they have. So, then we start on again, number seven. So there's the upper casement and the making of the tracks. They just appear on there now, but then it's farther down where you're making the tracks. Typical dragon. And then we start on the upper hole, of the, on the upper part of the hole. With the attaching the part on top of the casement, and you know, we've got the uh, lights and vents and and uh, scopes, and there again, putting the front front mantlet, sorry, the uh, the front plate onto the uh, casement again, and then we're starting to go around here with the grills and fire extinguisher, a couple of grab handles. There we have some more on. Uh, a bracket for carrying things I would think and then we're starting on the uh, typical dragon jack we have one two three four five six parts for the jack and then we're putting the assembly in the engine deck and the sea shoes and the uh, wrench or spanner 
and the Pioneer tools which I won't be putting on that time. I'll have them made, maybe painted and things like that, but I tend to put mine on as I'm weathering. So after I've painted them and then we have to put another jack on there, onto the side. Uh, and there again, more, more Pioneer tools on the top. Oh, you can't see that there again with the spanner, sorry, the shovel and they look like track cleaning rods and other bits and pieces. Uh, again, there we have the manual uh, bar for starting it manually. A couple of brackets again, aerial point, uh, spare wheels, and then we have the bracket for the spare wheels, and then we have the plate at the back for the casement. And then we have the start on the front again, it's giving you where uh, IS-20 goes, that's the, um, the gun crutch or travel lock as some people call it, which is actually flipped down, which is uh, instead of being on the front, it's flipped underneath. I've never seen that before, and then we're putting them to the low casement again, which I thought they were worthy for the sponsons. And, the, uh, and then we have the, uh, these like little brackets, I keep breaking these off every time I do a kit like this, onto the wing wood guards, and that looks like the convoy light I would have thought. Uh, and we start along with the barrel. Obviously, we'll be using the metal one. And then we're starting to with, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no in, inner detail or anything like that. So we've got the built of the uh, the gun. It says it's an alternative part. Obviously, that means the barrel. Um, yeah. So the the mantlet and then the pig's head on the front. And then we're starting to uh, do the. The shirts on the side, and there's the small brackets that I saw. This is P, I think most of it's P, apart from some of the brackets there, and then the placement of the. Uh, so we've cut a little bit off there. We'll see how delicate that's going to be to cut off on the brackets. And then we have the tanker's bar going on as well. Can not understand why they put that on this time. Should have put that on the other step, but there you go. I say we have alternative ways to do it, but I'm going to obviously do it the way they tell me. But I'll probably leave a couple of shirts and off and a bit of damage and things like that to it when I get round to it. Um, is that it? 21. Oh no. And then we've got part 22, which is the bracket with the uh, spare track. It goes. Where do you think instructions? Right. Let's see where we are. There we are. At the top we have. Putting the track on through that bar that I said, the spare track doesn't give you how many, you're going to have to count them. And then putting the exhaust together, putting them on, and then a little the tow, the, uh, tow for the tow cables to go on, which I haven't seen a tow cable actually. You'll have to look into that, see if there must be a tow cable for it. Obviously there isn't in this kit. But I'll find out when I go online and do a bit of research on this vehicle. And then we have the one and only, obviously, Colour call out, well, blue call out, I should say. And there again, it's only give us one side and a top and rear and front, so we have to work out the other side ourselves. So, should be good dragging myself. I'll dig into this, and obviously, where we put the instructions, we've got the number, obviously, and the bottom cross, which is on each side, and that's it. There's only two that I can see. And it's give us five, it's give us four. Oh, must be for spares, I would have thought. Um, what does it say about the colours? It doesn't give you really anything about the colours. Did I miss that bit? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Should have said about the colours. What we need is, uh, it's for... I can't even see what the for. It doesn't even tell you what company it is. It just says flat black, steel, wood brown, RLM sandy brown, burnt iron and khaki green. But uh, doesn't give you the paint, the paint, you know, makers just gives you the colours. But it gives you a number, but the number is for Mr. Colour. It says Mr. Colour, sorry. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have to look into that. But when we get there. So, check, all in all, quite happy with the build. Quite happy with the kit I bought. Uh, looks a nice, easy build. Doesn't look too difficult. Apart from the tracks, will be a ball out. But there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I bought it, and I'll be making a build log of that once I actually get um, 
get round to it. But this one, as you know, it takes me a long time to do one one kit, a couple of months. But uh, so I'm on with the M M10 at the moment. Slow process. So this is the first time I've really sat down properly since I got back from the Stoke show. So I'll be doing a bit more this afternoon. So that's me rambling. So I say I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and taking the time out of your day to do so. I uh, hope you like the review and I'd like to thank my new subscribers and obviously the old subscribers sticking with me. Um, and I say I, I might do that other kit review today, the little Sheridan. Well, since it's a little, the medium sized Sheridan, the Academy one. I may do that today, see how I feel later on. Um, so this is Greg signing off and we'll catch you very very soon.